All right, it says that I am live. Yay. So it is Michael Garber. For those of you who are new to my channel, I have not been going live too frequently on this channel. So I'm super excited to talk about my view of what I feel is transpiring and what I think that means moving forward. I want to point out that these are my personal perspectives, and I know that many of them might be different. Um, than maybe what others feel and I think that is a wonderful thing because this is a time of people coming together and people having diverse perspectives and diverse views and we are going to learn how to work with that and to value differences of perspectives because this is how we create a new thing that is in collaboration not competition in the spirit of unity in the spirit of devotion love whatever you want to point towards that state of reverence and wanting well for others so i think that is going to play a part in the theme of what i'm about to share today i hope that as you join you take a moment to do the bells or the uh, following or sharing this video is super super helpful for me and I'm really grateful for all the support and all the love that has been coming to me and to my partner Ron and to the work that we do in this world. And I'm really excited to have this conversation with you. I'm also going to be doing a little bit of pulling some cards to see what wants to come through. Um, yeah, a little bit more spontaneously. And I'm also going to be checking on my phone right now if I even know where my phone is at this current moment to see um, what's going on in the chat. So give me just a moment. I'll let a few other people join. I would welcome, I welcome any questions that anybody might have. Uh, put those in the chat so that I can speak to them. And we're gonna get started. I'm going to open this up just so I can see the chat. Bless you all. And i um, really looking forward to having this conversation with you. So give me just one moment. And I'm going to check this over here. All right. All right. It says we've got a few people there. Good. I'm just, I'm so getting used to how Facebook is doing the chat. It's not how I used to see it. So it's, it's different for me, but I'm going to make my way through. Okay. Three more seconds. Good. So, all right, let's get into it. So I have some notes here of some of the things that I want to share and some of the things I want to talk about. If you have any questions about this stuff, put it in the comment section in the chat. I used to have like an easy chat. Someone can also tell me where the chat is on these new things now. Um, and we'll get into this now. So the first thing I want to speak about is that this perspective that I'm giving is not uh, from being a Republican or a Democrat or a this or a that. It's really coming through my years of my own personal growth, um, my own personal perspective through my way of expressing my spirituality. Um, it is obviously going to come with my own bias and my own perspective. And so if anything feels untrue to you, honor that and then if anything kind of moves something or stirs a little something in you I really invite you to feel into that and see what's underlying that um, the emotion or the impulse or the trigger that might come up from some of these conversations um, this topic is going to be within the lens and view of a process called ascension one could also call it a higher evolutionary impulse or higher evolutionary flow of life um, this is coming from the esoteric and the occult sciences and also from my years of facilitating quantum healing hypnosis sessions in my method called uh, my partner and my method um, called illuminated quantum healing which has a variety of methods where we take people into their internal space into their space of consciousness and we're able to help them get very relaxed focus the mind and information is evoked that is really helpful for those clients to understand you know solutions to their problems and also understand what they can do in the future and even some of these clients are going into spaces where they're seeing potential future events 
how they might come out. So some of that information, um, as well as when these clients are in hypnosis, um, hypnotic states, they're able to tap into higher consciousness. You could call this the higher self. You could call this intuition. You could call this the guides, ascended masters, angels, these kinds of things. But for those of you who are familiar with those kind of terms, you can think of it in terms of connecting to the divine, connecting to intuition, or coming into a higher perspective. Um, and so while clients are in these sessions, we're able to get a lot of really in you know, powerful information that's really transformative, evocative, and inspiring, and the clients get a lot of healing out of these sessions as well. But that is my perspective that I'm going to be speaking from, is from my years of doing that work. So, let's see here. All right, so when I'm talking about a higher evolution, I'm not talking about Darwinian evolution, although Darwinian evolution I think is fantastic. I know some spiritual folks will like toss that out the door or even religious people. I actually, from the little bit that I know, but from bits that I have studied, I actually vibe with that a lot. But Darwinian science is speaking about physical evolution of physical forms. I'm coming from an esoteric occult science perspective where we're looking at evolution not just at the levels of physical but we're also looking at non-physical which science is just starting to tap into that and, me and be able to measure that but the different wisdom traditions around the world, the occult traditions around the world um, have known about and spoken about and have even ways of measuring these more subtle aspects of reality and to tap into them and to understand them. So when I'm speaking about a higher evolution, or generally when I speak of evolution, I'm talking about this esoteric perspective that takes into account the evolution of physical forms like Darwin, but I'm taking it into a perspective that speaks about not only the biology and the physical forms evolving, but also what lives within the consciousness, the energy. Um, and so in the way that I am thinking about this, I'm thinking, that there is a hand, let's say, there is a guidance, there is a structure and a theme and a wisdom that is behind evolution that isn't just um, survival of the fittest or that, um, what's the other one that kind of goes along with this? There's a word that I want to say, like random, that there's actually a... Um, a system and a higher intelligence behind evolution that guides evolution not just in the form but in the consciousness itself so when i'm thinking what else do i want to say about that so when i'm thinking of the earth and thinking of humanity and thinking of events that happen within a culture within a civilization and obviously within the world i am coming from the perspective and the view that this is all part of a scheme or a plan of how the systems and the and the components of that system are evolving towards a higher level of harmony so i don't subscribe to the idea of um well, I, I subscribe to the idea that there is more to the processes, there's more to these events than what meets the eye. What we see is the first superficial, and we'll also feel the emotional components that comes up for each individual, but collectively these events are evolving the collective consciousness and the personal consciousness towards levels of higher harmony. And I know that probably seems really far-fetched for some people that might be listening to this, but it's through the struggle, it is through, this is where the Darwinian science really comes into play. It is through that struggle and through the pushing and through the clashing that evolutionary processes actually happen. So when things are soft and flowing and everything's balanced and good, we don't actually see that much of a shift in evolution. We might actually see things starting to go backwards. We actually need the, uh, a little, you know, a, at least a little bit of suffering, a little bit of a little bit of um, unease um, for things to, or contrast for things to evolve, to have the opportunity to evolve. It is through that clashing that the process actually um, can occur. So what I'm looking at, um, let's 
even look at an example that's not so emotionally charged at the moment. Let's look back at, let's look at, yeah, I guess I'll use the idea of war. I know that's probably, not, who knows what that means with search engines and things like that. But when we think of these like bigger conflicts that have happened in different parts of the world throughout time, we can see that um, one group comes into another group and they take over that group. From either side of that, the people may have, they will have different perspectives of that. One will see it as a positive and one will see it as a negative. If we zoom out a bit um, from that and see what's the benefits overall for this group, then we can see, or you know, for the collective consciousness that's now beginning to merge through that conflict, then we can see that um, new these cultures then begin to merge and create something new that some of the things from one way of uh, living and another way of living come together and something new happens to it we can see that through time we've had separated spaces sep separated civilizations on the planet and through the um, conflicts that come up those we slowly started to over time become more of a regional you know larger regional collective consciousness into a continental into a global consciousness which we are now in right now with the internet coming out with um, the history of everything that's happened to all the different nations and civilizations prior to this that we're now at a time with all of the things that have happened, atrocities and beautiful things all throughout, we're now at a time where a larger potential of unity is possible because of this connection. And in fact, if you're somebody like myself who believes in alternative histories where there were other civilizations that were very advanced, like the Atlantean civilization, the Nurian civilization, where civilizations like that are said to have been telepathic within the culture, that there was intuition was much higher, or that there was a greater amount of mental power, um, a mental telepathic connection that was possible in the cultures at that time, that you know that went away and now we've over this period we've been building that back up and so now we have things like cell phones internet all of that is laying the groundwork of connectivity amongst the people of the planet and the different regions of the planet and is starting to build the steps up to get us ready for telepathic union once again and like i said i know that's going to be a really um, new idea for some people that might be listening to this and for some of you are like yeah I love that I so want to, I want that to happen so I'm just gonna look at my page again just to see where we are okay so if you're liking what I'm sharing if you think um, this is good please feel free to comment in there and also uh, feel free to share it um, so where are so the question that i want to ask is where are you in your view right now your personal view of the world and i'm going to break this down into three different perspectives um or three different groupings of potential views that might be out there um that people might be having one is going to be from a place of fear um and that's going to be places like oh the world is you know going into a bad place or there's danger lurking or um something is going something bad is going to happen i need to be afraid of my future we could call this a 3d perspective this is the default perspective that humanity has had for a long period of time in that uh, it's a very survival based mindset it is very much about the physical body and the ego, the role, and the identity of that physical body. And this is what most of humanity has been operating, uh, well, yeah, I mean, really, the great majority of humanity has been operating in for quite some time. Then we can go into one that is about, it's a, it's a different way of working in polarity in that, that it, things are seen as you start to come into universal perspective like all oh, everything's happening for a reason like universal laws like that law of attraction things like this and when somebody is in there in that kind of grouping of ideas they're starting to become more aware of their inner space their inner self you can call that your soul you can call that your essence you can call that your 
many different names can be connected to that. But that space of inner consciousness and inner identity starts to be worked with a bit more. This is where we can also start to see some spiritual concepts starting to evolve where people are, um, I also want to share this maybe in my groups. Give me just one second. I'll get right back on that. Uh, share to group. One more second. So from that perspective, we start to have also this idea of a spiritual war going on. So it's good versus evil. Um, it is there's a lot I'm just going to keep it very general at that um, and there's many different ideas that kind of go around that idea so there's this idea of uh, a, a battle of that is spiritual and this is also a space that has different levels of fear but also um, also levels of trust and faith and as we can call this the 4d perspective fourth dimensional perspective so we're starting to become aware of more than just what meets the eye it's we're starting to tap into essence at that point then i want to speak about another level which is of that this is all part of a higher plan in fact all of this is a higher evolution and all is um, coming from a, a field of oneness and i'm not talking about a concept of oneness or a brotherhood kind of thing of like mental agreement like i believe what you believe and now we're one i'm talking about an inherent level of unity where everything is actually a aspect of that one greater thing that one consciousness if you will um, you can call that god although that word is very convoluted and has different meanings to different people you can call it source is a really um popular one at this point in time but you may have your other language to put to that but that everything is that one thing and that there are different components within that one thing that are in seemingly interacting I, i'm using that word um for a specific reason but that generally all is one and all is interacting as that one thing evolving everything into a higher level okay so this is the the fear-based the conflict uh, at the spiritual level that's happening karma that's happening and then we have this other thing that is from coming from a space of inherent unity inherent oneness and um that holds the space for the polarity to evolve if that makes sense it's the space in which positive good negative evil interact with but they're all just part of that one thing in fact this is a um what we believe to be good and what we believe to be evil are projections that we have ideas perspectives that we have because if we zoomed out it's a different perspective of what those things actually mean and that that perspective is that all is happening for the benefit of all of life okay so this is then bringing me into this idea of your view of your own being your own self notice are you which of those three that i spoke of which one is resonating more with you right now and be honest with me just put it out there are you coming from the body are you coming from the soul or are you coming from spirit are you coming from the body are you coming from the essence are you coming from this space of um spirit oneness uh unity uh, uh higher um i don't want to say higher in terms of you know better or worse just that there is this benevolent grace that is permeating all of this just go ahead and put that in the chat let me know are you um, the first the second or the third one body soul or spirit and this is really important because I believe that humanity right now has been very focused on mental and, and intellectual pursuits we've seen huge booms of um, uh, technology philosophy um, medicine for better or for worse 
um, technology for better or for worse, but we've seen these intellectual pursuits um, becoming dominant, becoming very um, very much being put onto a pedestal of value. And now we're starting to move into a new phase of evolution, a new space for humanity that is very, very, very exciting from my perspective. Um, in that we are starting to move into intuition, into higher qualities of the mind that are based on more abstract feeling, more knowing, more um, visionary, futuristic perspective, where things are being created right now based on a holding a greater vision for the future, trusting that that is coming and going with it, because that is part of what intuition brings to us when we have intuitions about things a feeling about something it inherently comes with the energy that can get us to start making the moves in that direction from a space and place of um, knowing and faith and wisdom inner wisdom so we're moving from the space of intellect facts and information concrete into a, a time of evolution where we are trusting intuition, trusting wisdom, and working from that um, internal system of guidance. And it's, that's going to become especially true when there's destabilization that is happening in a culture, when you're not sure what's going on because the progression doesn't look so clear and there's too many things going on where you're not so sure. Um, and so from that, you have to feel into yourself and cultivate inner wisdom, inner insight, knowing faith, um, so that you can move forward with less fear and more trust in the process. So when I'm looking forward from this occult, esoteric perspective of the evolution of life on the planet and the planet itself, I think we're moving into a space of what was hidden being revealed. That's what intuition brings. That's what this higher level of the mind uh, is about. It's about seeing beyond the superficial and trusting what it is what it is that you're feeling about a situation. And those intuitions will always come with honor and reverence. And if it's feelings about things that are something else that are coming actually from a fear-based bias or projection of fear or unprocessed emotion, those come with a different type of feeling in the body. Those are more contraction, tight. But what we're doing is we're shedding those layers of unprocessed emotion and fear and moving into higher spaces of trust and faith and knowing. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of things start to come up to the surface and being put out onto the public table for us all to look at and to inspect and, and reconfigure our own understanding of the world because there's an idea that humanity has been living in ignorance for quite some time and because of that ignorance we have forgotten who we are as expressions of that one divine consciousness and we believe that we are the physical body or that we're even stuck even in a spiritual trap of the soul we haven't realized our God self in our own consciousness we're still, you know, on that ladder, moving our way up towards that great potential that beings like Yeshua, you may call him Jesus, or Krishna, or um, great um, yoga masters throughout time, great esoteric masters throughout time have demonstrated Buddha, um, that there's this greater potential for humanity, and they came to show the way, and even start to talk about the future, which we're I believe that we're living in now where uh, more of humanity would make that climb up the mountain of potential and reach the peak. Uh, <clears throat> so I think what we're actually going into right now is a time where more of those people that are climbing up the mountain are going to step into spaces of leadership um, in the in the world and um, in particular you know in the United States and why do I say that about the United States from an esoteric occult perspective uh, of human and planetary evolution the movement of people the movement of civilizations cultures conflicts you know all this kind of stuff colonization all these different things while you know within it or from a certain perspective 
it obviously is looking atrocious, terrible, horrible, and terrible things have happened. Also, some really beautiful, good things have happened through it. But it's hard to pick them apart. But if we zoom out even further and we see as a totality um, of how things have been evolving, then we see different bloodlines that were, you know, in different um, places, different biology that was cultivated in different um, cultures over periods of time and then when the merging happened through various different things maybe even let's say something happened a, a catastrophe happened and this civilization had to come over to be with this one because they didn't have a home anymore a merging happened a new biology began to be cultivated as well as a new consciousness as a new beliefs and perspectives started to merge and, and conflict and so now we're at this time where we see places like the united states the uk australia um, Israel, there are different places where many cultures have come together into one place and have begun to merge. Uh, we can also see that a lot of issues have been happening over these last years in those particular places. And I think, from my perspective, while there's many, many spinning plates with each situation, I believe that is because a new consciousness, a new biology is emerging in those places. and there are a variety of forces and interactions that are happening to either seemingly thwart that um, or but ultimately even that thwarting is serving the evolution to a higher place so I am a person that has a positive futuristic perspective of what's happening on the planet and when I look at these different events I understand that there is a karmic evolution that is happening there and a higher scheme that all of these things are beginning to interact with. If you're liking this conversation, it's super helpful if you can share that, like it, comment in the comment box. It's going to really be helping this message get around. So as all of this is happening, we see a larger concentration, like I said, of issues happening in those spaces because those places, I do believe, are going to emerge as the new leadership or people are going to emerge within those areas as the new earth new consciousness leaders in um, those regions and that's really exciting so in the theosophical society they call these world servers these are people that are going through an internal initiation process where they are going through rapid acceleration in their life more rapid than most of the people on the planet not because they're better than but because on a soul level they have worked very tirelessly very hard over a long 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 period of time a long string of incarnations to get to the spot that we're at now to step into global leadership and from this space of global leadership we are going to transform every level of culture on this planet into a higher form a higher expression that is based on these universal principles of loving kindness, compassion, creativity, um, nonviolence, um, inspiration, intuition, benevolence, all of this is going to begin to permeate every level of civilization all across the planet. You can call these the Christed beings stepping forward, the prophets returning, the uh, bird tribe returning. They, these are souls that are quite advanced and they have come onto this planet right now to initiate this process of a revolution in the most beautiful way. Um, in a way of love, in a place of truth, in a place of soulful alignment with the greater um, unity of life, let's say. So what that means is we have had for a long period of time, you can call it, well, at the very 3D perspective, we can say that it's institutions. We can say that it's institutions and people of power and the patriarchy and the da, da 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 We can say all of that. And from the 3D perspective, that's absolutely valid and true. If we shift a little bit more to the 4D perspective from a space of um, where there might be more of a feeling of spiritual battle going on, a spiritual conflict, a good versus evil battle going on. From that perspective, where was I going with the first one? So I can view this one, just a second. Uh, 
From that perspective, there have been negative forces that are other dimensional, extraterrestrial, that have been negatively impacting and controlling, keeping humanity from evolving. Um, there are a variety of different perceptions that people can have around that. That's one perspective. Um, also valid and true from that level of seeing it. From a fifth dimensionally aligned, unity focused consciousness, we're all still making our way up towards that 5D peak, but um, from that perspective, what is happening is that there is a larger scheme of evolution. Certain conditions have been allowed and permitted for a certain period of time, and now we are coming to the finalization of that time period and the beginning of something new. And so because of that newness and that completion of what has been allowed and permitted and even blessed by the divine to happen, has now is now coming to a close and a new thing is beginning to initiate. A new life is beginning to emerge through the cracks. And so we're going to see at this time things that have been veiled becoming unveiled, revealed, truth coming to the surface and not truth like, oh, I think this is truth and I think this is truth. This is going to be like in your face, whoa, I didn't know that, wow okay, I have to like totally reconfigure my own self. So we're going to have people that are starting to shift. Some are going to see right now doom and gloom. Even those in the lower part of the fourth dimensional consciousness, lower parts, so this is meaning that there's a lot of trauma still in process. There's information that they have not yet received yet on their path. Um, but there is a perspective of doom and gloom uh, and, you know, looking like worlds going towards destruction. If you're in the higher fourth dimensional perspective, or at least striving towards it, striving to reach for, you know, that something better is going on, or also up into the higher levels of that moving towards fifth dimensional consciousness, then you're going to have the perspective that everything that's happening right now is amazing, and it's only serving the highest, best, and good. That's the perspective. So where do you fall right now? And that's not a, a place to really judge yourself from. It's just to take inventory because... I hope that those of you that are listening to this are interested in your spiritual growth, are interested in maturing your consciousness, are interested in healing yourself and serving a greater level of healing all across the planet. It's an internal, it is an internal job first and foremost, then it permeates out into everything else. So it doesn't mean you can't do good until you're healed, but know that there is going to, the, the quality and level of what you're able to bring is only going to increase exponentially the more you get really honest about what's happening in your inner space. What thoughts are, uh, are um, guiding your decisions and your perspectives? We all have conditioning. Conditioning means the thoughts that we've adopted in either consciously or unconsciously through our cultures, our, our family belief systems. Uh, religious belief systems, and also that which was backloaded from our previous incarnations that we come into each life with. So we all have conditioning. We all have limits. We all have biases and prejudices. But what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Are those prejudices, prejudices and biases going to continue to run the show? Are we going to stay in a system where we are fighting each other and pointing fingers and arguing and backbiting and mudslinging? and pointing, you know, doing all this kind of stuff, or are we going to say, I honor your perspective, let's see how we can work together and see what we can evolve that's even better than either of us can think about at this point. That's the space that I'm hoping that we're all moving to, but we have to be doing internal inventory to understand where our prejudices are, where our biases are, where our unprocessed wounds are, and target them, get in there, work on them, clear them up, because this is the time of the apocalypse, the unveiling. Apocalypse means unveiling, and the unveiling starts within first. We have to unveil all of that ignorance that all of us have, and if you're a person that's listening to that and say, I'm not ignorant, well, we all have it. We all, we, we are, the fact that we're even in this body means that we don't know our true self, our, as the divine consciousness itself, like truly, 100% of the time, absolutely. All of us here have, we may know that intellectually, but then we go into, you know, we go into our, our identity with the body and with our national role, our nationality, our roles, our, you know, our conditioning. We go into that. We all do it. Where eyes are open for a second and then go back in. 
but we're going we're moving towards the point of absolute rapture absolute and i don't mean like that from a um, necessarily religious per se rapture in terms of the realization that can happen spontaneously within ourselves as our true self comes online and shines out and guides this world that's what we're moving towards and i do think that that's what we're going to see more of in the years to come um this means i believe we're going into a wellness revolution and so what happened with <laughs> i'm finally getting kind of to the point of what i said this video is about finish that's my hook um is that i believe like with um certain moves are going to be made with rfk hopefully um with some of the other moves that are being made throughout that whole administration I mean, project whatever we're going to project onto it. I think everything's happening for a reason. And I do believe that what happened in, with the um, choice that was made, I think it is working for the highest and best for humanity, for the planet overall. I don't know why. I don't know necessarily what that looks like. I can only speak to my own personal perspective when I look at, okay, so now, okay, now that I can look at this, what does this mean? I think that there's going to be a wellness revolution when we have all of those when the science is actually science that is backed by scientific testing and altruistic pursuit um, when we have um, systems of medicine that believe that the human beings natural state is well-being and health full spectrum all levels all sectors and that all issues in the body and, or even in the mind are signs that there's just something there that needs to be um, healed, it needs to be integrated, it needs to be converted to wisdom. Once the scientific community starts to even turn even an inch towards what the esoterics and the occultists have known for thousands, thousands of years, we're going to see a boom in uh, healthcare. And I don't mean healthcare, it's wellness enhancement. Because um, I don't, because, yeah, anyway, that's even a whole other topic to get into. But I believe that we're, as we're shifting into this next segment of human evolution, we're moving into holistic systems. We're moving into holistic models, meaning that this sector of civilization plays a part in this, civiliz in this other aspect of civilization. As I improve this, this improves over here. So what that means is when people are he healthy and well, when they're feeling um, clean, clear, balanced, and so comfortable in their bodies, then economy gets better. People um, that are in the economy, when the economy is better, when they're living from a soul-inspired, essence-inspired way of living in their life and in their career, that they're, use they're feeling purposeful, in their in their businesses and the ways that they can contribute to culture which may not be just jobs anymore this is starting to move into how we serve one another as a holistic system then those when when that aspect of economy is good then we see crime going down we see more acts of kindness happen when people are feeling aligned and i believe that that is where we're going eventually i don't know exactly how that goes i think that power is in all of our hands we're moving into this what you can call the Aquarian age this is releasing top-down power structures and moving into a time of power to the people grassroots more of these situations that have been happening the systems that have been guiding our conditioning I don't even want to enforcing conditioning it's not guiding it um, hypnotizing superimposing this idea that we have to have those certain things in this certain way to you know be productive and be good we're in a sick culture this is a sick society this is a sick planet we are unwell and for things to shift we need to look at the holistic system of wellness which i just did a video on my um, social network on the eight dimensions of uh, well-being which includes a lot of what i have just been sharing but we have to look at all eight of those things uh, ev environmental well-being, physical body well-being, um, career well, uh, the, these aren't the actual terms, but there's eight of them. I have the video. It's there. You can go look at it, www.source.energy, um, where we have been having 
it, because I knew that these times were coming, that we wanted to start moving into speaking about multidimensional holistic wellness because this is the medicine of the future. It has been the medicine of the past. We forgot. We got to sleep. And it's becoming, again, the medicine of the future, the systems of the future. They're going to really bring us into a higher, great, higher state of cohesion, balance, homeostasis as a planet, as a civilization, as a nation. If those of you, I don't know who knows what's going to happen with those, but as an individual, um, as a family, moving into holistic wellness. Um, I don't have any fears about the future coming up. I'm actually very excited about it. I, I was having a hard time even feeling into the future for quite a few weeks. I felt to just hold off on that. And then after the election decision came through, it's like my vision opened up and all of a sudden I could see how I'm going to be playing um, over these next, um, this next stage. Um, and started getting some direction on ways to apply myself. And that means, first and foremost, is helping people get well. That is what New Earth Ascending is all about. That's the ministry that my husband and I started. That's what the Source Energy Network is about. That's what our Illuminated Quantum Healing, our group coaching is all about. If you are wanting to get well, if you know that there are some things going on, whether they be physical, whether they be emotional, mental, energetic, spiritual growth that you want to do please send me a direct message right now or when this video is over and i can help you i have been working tirelessly my husband and i and our team we just formed we have been working tirelessly to create systems to help humanity at this evolutionary junction point to move into higher states of wellness and world service if you also know that you want to serve in a bigger way whether that be through finding your own personal alignment your own personal purpose um, discovering what it is your soul came to this planet to do because there is not a useless person on this planet every single soul here has incredible value equal to all contributing to this evolution even the most dark sinister ones are playing a role and I want to help you step full on 100% into your soulful mission into a life of purpose into a life of service so that you can really help switch things around the power is in our hands and I am full throttle right now I'm really excited about it and I hope you're getting super excited as you listen to me if you're not feeling full throttle and if you're feeling like oh I need to take care of I want to get I want to get more well I want to shine brighter I want to feel even more connected please reach out to me if you're a person that wants to assist people through um, healing processes through finding their soul uh, purpose through living in greater states of holistic well-being please also reach out to me we have systems for that you can learn the multiple quantum healing methods that we have out uh, embodied light Reiki we have holistic life counseling coaching whatever you want to call that um, there, we just have a lot of systems to help people get well and to really fuel this evolutionary uh, fire that we're all building together, this fire of transformation. So I don't know exactly what's coming up. Exactly. I have an understanding of where we're going. It's a new world that we all are going to create together. It is high frequency. It is permeating with love and grace and benevolence and harmony. That's what we're going towards. It might look shaky on the way there. It probably will. That's how transformation and evolution works. However, my faith is strong, and I have aligned myself with deep, deep, deep inner wisdom. And that's what I think will get all of us through these next stages, through all the bumps, through the valleys, through the peaks, is faith and wisdom. Inner faith, alignment, and wisdom. And all the other, other components I was speaking about. I don't think that this... Oh, wait, yay, there are comments. Great. Sounds good so far. I'm very optimistic about the future and the evolution of consciousness. Yes, yeah, spirit here. Good. Can you say more about... Okay, so somebody wanted to ask about the bird tribe. Well, this is coming from... First and foremost, this is coming from Ken Carey's book, I believe. And then I came into learning about Ken Carey and his work when I was dancing for Deodova. Shout out to Deodova and um, that crew. Um, where I 
where the term triggered. It, the, the word bird tribe is a trigger in itself of evolution. You hear it and you're like, oh, what is that? Tell me more about that and you can do some research on it. But I'll give you my perspective from my viewpoint. There are several ways to look at it in that um, there are civilizations that speak of actual bird, humanoid bird being. So you can look at the Egyptian, you can look at the Sumerian um, pantheon, and you can see bird-like humanoid beings that brought teachings to those civilizations, higher levels of science, um, occult sciences, we can call that occult, just meaning hidden to the, you know, the, the esoteric sciences that are out there. Esoteric's not the best word. Anyway, um, but the, those beings and other beings that come from other civilizations, other systems throughout the universe, or even angelic beings, we could say beings that come from the higher dimensions that are highly evolved, come to the planet and um, help shift civilization. So I think that comes in a few ways. One of those is through the souls. Uh, those of us that have been um, living in a space of leadership for humanity for quite some time. I came, I'm one of those souls. I can speak humbly from that. I, that's my purpose and has been my purpose of coming to the planet for quite some time to evolve. I come from other systems where um, that's what we that's what we do this bird tribe we go from system to system to system to help those systems evolve so um, these you can call them prophets you can call them the mystics from different times but um, we can call them the avatars these are high level souls that have made it through all of the incarnational requirements um, have cultivated deep wisdom have refined themselves and come and incarnate at different times or play different roles to help the system evolve. Um, so that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is disclosure and the revelation of the star nations when that starts to happen more frequently. We're starting to see that peek through on the television with um, you know the military starting to discuss extraterrestrials and uh, current president was, I, from what I heard, or president to be um it also was speaking about that in an interview i just heard someone telling you about that i didn't actually listen to that um interview but um when that happens then when humanity reaches a certain point in its evolution and a lot of that fear has been released and then those star nations will begin to reveal themselves in the skies and through the communication systems and earth is evolving it will be a hub for intergalactic species intergalactic nations to um, uh, share their information here it will be kind of like a grand central station of this part of the galaxy um, but we still have some time to uh, until that happens but that's the bird tribe so once those civilizations come from uh, places like the Pleiades, from Sirius, from Arcturus, from, I mean, there's many different nations, um, regions of space that are highly evolved, and they will start coming and sharing technology and wisdom and helping humanity um, build the next phase. And I know that's probably super far out for some people and may, maybe not even practical. What is practical about that information is what does that inspire within you, number one? Number two, what does it um, bring up for you in terms of fear or judgment? And then work with that. That's that's that 4D transitionary phase of you know noticing your triggers, noticing your prejudice, noticing your um, you know knee-jerk reactions to certain things, and then seeing what that's really all about. Um, let me see if there's any more cards. Ask me some more questions while I'm here. I'm going to pull some cards. This has been really great. I'll stay on for another uh, 10 minutes or so. But, oh, Allison, sending you so much love. Australia is in the house. Good to see you there. So love that time being with you at Uluru. What a special time to have so many beautiful people from around the world coming together for that really unique and auspicious thing. So, um, okay, I'm going to shuffle my cards. 
I do want to speak to this being a time of moving out of competition and into collaboration. This is moving into humanitarian effort, not me, 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 my kingdom, my thing. We're building a queendom, if you will, a kingdom, if you like that too. But we're building a collaborative, holistic system of connection across this planet. There is plenty of ta uh, space at the table for everyone who wants to contribute to that. And this means that each and every single person is being encouraged to step into their fullness, into their purpose. And we are each supporting each other to do that so that we can all work together in full, absolute mastery together. So if you're starting to get, that means all the control systems, all of the jealousy, all of the pride, all of the ego, all of the lack consciousness, I can't do this or I might lose out. We all get to win. We get to see the end of those cycles and those systems of control and power. We get to see it done and we get to, but first we have to decolonize our own self that we have to deconstruct those systems within our own space, internal space, and come into a space of equanimity, benevolence, altruism, selflessness, and all of that, and, and work from that place. And we're all in different phases of that, no judgment. Um, I know a lot of people, especially those that have been waking up, have been going through a lot of pain in their life because they signed up to um, clean and clear all of that stuff out and for, that meant incarnating into it first to liberate themselves so they could play a more powerful role in helping the world liberate itself so um, share with me what do you think about that idea let's see I'll do four three two one that one wants to come out so this is going beyond normal look at that light bulbs also look at that it's the space of intuition space of knowing the space of higher consciousness is the golden light bulb we are moving into a golden age although i will say that from the occult perspective that takes uh, a lot longer but we're we're finishing up the age of darkness the kali yuga and uh, starting to transition into, you know, towards the golden age, um, which is going to be so much fun to continue incarnating to build that. Um, I was just talking to my friend today about transmuting the energy of the collective. Yes, holding that space, allowing, you know, allowing, allowing the dust to settle and encouraging integration and um, all that. Let's see, what else does going beyond normal look like? She has a clock on her forehead. Let us take a moment right now and really feel into how we want this future timeline to play out. We're on a timeline right now that has many, many probabilities and potentials. How, what do you feel as you vision forward into that timeline? What is the highest ideals that you'd like to see humanity embody and express? What is there? How is it different then? Whether it's one year down, five years, ten years, let us move forward in time. If anything is coming up that is bringing up fear for you, that is showing you where there's some parts that need to be integrated, that need to be investigated within yourself because <laughs> a country term that comes up for me so part of my come hell or high water um, we are being asked to step into great alignment and to trust in our footing and to be emanations of those spiritual qualities of benevolence faith wisdom and whether there are going to be some bumps and peaks and valleys there probably will we're an evolutionary process how do you want, how do you intend to show up? And how, what work have you done internally to prepare yourself for that? Right now, I am diving deep into the esoterics of the dying, death, and rebirth process. And I'm looking at my fears around, or my assumptions around my own life, around mortality, what it means to die. So I am consciously preparing to die. That's the work that I'm doing right now. And I think, honestly, all spiritual work is that, because at the moment of your death, it is your spiritual 
work that is going to show its fruit at that time. It is what you've done with your consciousness at the time of your departure that is going to be very, very evident for you. So do the work now. None of us know how long we're going to live. And many are about to leave this beautiful planet because it is time for them to go because of a variety of reasons, but to just that their soul is ready to move into its next chapter, its next incarnation, its next uh, classroom of learning and growth because those systems of oppression, control, and ignorance are on their way out the door. And we're moving into a time of revelation, revolution, illumination, and alignment. And that is going to look different ways. And people will interpret all these different events different ways. But know that everything that happens is the past being reconciled. And the groundwork for a new, brighter, better future for all is beginning to emerge through that. Let's pick one more card. One more. Here we go. What do you feel? What do you feel? I just gave a lot of perspective on what I feel to be true. From this current now vantage point, this current view that I have in relation to myself and this world and universe. What do you feel about yourself? Who is that? What are you? What is your purpose? What is the purpose for you in this life? What do you believe to be true about this world and about this universe? And how does that s inform the way that you show up in this world? And is there space for things to evolve even more? And what work are you doing to evolve your consciousness, your felt experience as you move from moment to moment throughout your life? Because there are going to be very evocative experiences coming up. And all of them are meant to trigger our inner worlds so that we can evolve into higher and higher levels of clarity, perception, and alignment. So prepare yourself now and what is it? I believe in being ready. I believe in being ready. I believe in being ready for the time is drawing near. Um, that everyone on this beautiful Mother Gaia remember who they are. We are already unconditional love. That we be embodied in that unwavering, unconditional love. And that we act and respond and live in all ways from this space and place of unconditional love. Absolutely. Thank you, Allison. That was really, really beautiful. And I think that's that's where I'll end this. Apples and oranges, planet Earth. I'll show you that, that card one more time. So if you're excited about this conversation, please like comment on it some more share it with those of you um, with you know people that might resonate with this information um, check us out on the source energy network www.source.energy or you can get the might this is what we really recommend is getting the mighty networks app and then looking for the source energy network and building your profile um, well you have to apply first and somebody will let you in so answer your questions honestly um, we created this space because it's a safe digital space for all the things that we discussed there. Even this conversation for me has been edgy because uh, there has been, you know, things going on with the, you know, the ability to speak about what you truly feel and believe. And some of that has inspired me to move off of public spaces. But I felt um, after the other night when I was laying in bed at like three in the morning, it felt like the space is opened and it's time to come back out of my little shaman's cave. So, um, one more card off the top. Focus on the light. Focus on the light. Have that inter. If you believe, if you want to at least, to grow into your mastery, there is a practice from the Tibetan uh, Buddhist studies called Guru Yoga, I believe. 
where you actually visualize yourself as the embodiment of the qualities of a deity. So if there is a particular deity that you think is like the penultimate, is that a real word? You know, the highest peak of what evolution is, uh, as, you know, embodying certain qualities, exuding certain qualities, and acting and embodying a certain way, then visualize yourself as that being, as that great illumined master, lord or lady of light. See it. Hold it in your vision. Hold new earth in your vision. Keep it in your vision. And walk through this reality with that, you know, kind of paste it up on your mental, on your psychic screen there. And that's what we're going towards. Kind of keep keep yourself there and walk and feel. Make your way through the forest. A clearing is coming. So, I love you all. I'm. It's been a really great time to be here. I really, really appreciate you. Um, I want to also speak to some of the at the Luminous Life Mentorship Program that is getting ready to, I'm going to start promoting a, a next wave of that. If you are interested in growing and you feel that I would be a great person to help you grow, to help you heal, to guide you into greater purpose, to assist you in activating your gifts and your talents, please reach out to me and I'll share with you all the different options of what I have and you can choose what feels most aligned with you and yeah, just come on over there into the Source Energy Network. It's We're creating some really sweet and beautiful things for you. So, sending you a lot of love. Thank you, Joy. What a great name, Joy. Missing you. Sending you a lot of love. Who else was here? I saw some likes and some things. So that's good. Bless you all. Be well. All of this is serving such great potentials for all of us. And we will get there. And I love you. And be well. Keep going.